Hi everyone, thanks for joining us again for this um, Facebook Live session uh, sponsored by the Canadian Celiac Association uh, talking about some atypical symptoms of celiac disease. My name is Dominika Gidrevich. I'm a pediatric gastroenterologist in Calgary. I am also a, mem a member of the Professional Advisor Committee for the Canadian Celiac Association. And so we're doing this series through, throughout May talking about the raising awareness about the atypical symptoms of celiac disease. And this one uh, I'll be talking about is about hepatitis, about celiac hepatitis, as well as uh, other types of liver issues encountered in patients with celiac disease. Uh, so if you're joining us live, please give me a big thumbs up if you're listening. That's great. It's always nice to um, and if you have any questions, just type them in and I'll try to answer them as I go through this 10-minute um, presentation or so about uh, uh, celiac hepatitis. And if you'd like more in-depth information, uh, the CCA is offering a webinar next Wednesday, May the 16th on atypical symptoms of celiac. So uh, first to start, uh, what is uh, hepatitis? Hep um, when people talk about hepatitis, they're talking about liver enzymes and those are usually referred to as either ALT or AST on a blood test. And so when you're looking at liver enzymes, there are certain normal values that, the, that they have. And in children, um, um, usually uh, uh, for boys, the normal values uh, 25 international units per liter um, or less, and in girls, about 22 international units per liter or less. So when we see numbers that are higher than that, then that's when we might look into uh, investigating why a patient has elevations in their liver enzymes. Probably the first thing to do would be to repeat those that blood work if to see if it's truly elevated. But when we think about uh, liver changes in patients with celiac, they've actually been first described back in the late 70s. And at that time, they had um, 74 adult patients with celiac disease and found that about 40% of them had elevations in their ALT and or their AST. And that after they started a gluten-free diet, that these numbers went to normal. Later on, they've done studies looking at children. And so they, they had studies looking at children less than two years of age who were newly diagnosed with celiac disease and also and found that about 60% of those children, uh, young children, had elevations in their liver enzymes. So it's actually probably uh, quite common uh, in that it affects about up 26 to 57% of children and about 39 to 47% of adults with newly diagnosed celiac disease. So on average, it's about 27% of patients. And I think that one of the key things is that you these elevations in liver enzymes, ALT, AST, in patients with newly diagnosed celiacs are mild. And that there aren't any other uh, associated changes. These patients don't, with celiac aren't found to have large livers or large spleens if this is a, in fact, what we call celiac hepatitis. Um, and so I think that's important to keep in mind because if, if you have a patient, if you have a person who has very high liver enzymes and other features uh, like yellow of the eyes or large liver, large spleen, then that would not be something that would be typical of celiac hepatitis. And it would be really important to look at other causes that could be leading to these um, changes of in blood work. And as I mentioned already, uh, after patients start on a gluten-free diet, if their elevations in ALT and AST are related uh, to the celiac disease, then about 90% of them normalize on a gluten-free diet. So why do we think this happened? Why do we think that patients with uh, celiac disease could have changes uh, seen in the liver? Um, one of the theories was that maybe there were some metabolic consequences of being malnourished. We know that patients who are malnourished can, we can see fatty livers in such patients, but we also know that fewer patients today are presenting with typical signs of malnutrition, uh, diarrhea as they used to. So that probably isn't uh, the, um, the only explanation. 
since malnutrition is not as common now, but we do still see about 27% of patients who have changes in their liver enzymes. One of the other theories is that when in patients who have celiac disease, they have uh, increased intestinal permeability, which means that when their intestines, their villi are inflamed, the connections between the intestinal cells um, are uh, altered, that changes the permeability, and that could allow for absorption of different things and, um, and antigens. And we know that about two-thirds of the blood supply to the liver actually comes from the intestines. So if there are um, antigens or inflammatory proteins that are uh, present within the intestines in a patient with active celiac disease, then these then can get to the liver. And that might be one of the reasons why we see the changes uh, in some of the liver enzymes in patients with newly diagnosed celiac disease. And if you, if you look at patients who are just being screened uh, for, celiac, for elevated liver enzymes and you're wondering how common is this, you can see about 6% um, of those patients uh, who are screened for elevated liver enzymes do have a positive celiac serology and about 3 to 4% of those actually end up having biopsy proven celiac disease. So it's an important thing to um, think about if you have a, if you uh, know someone or you have a patient with uh, elevations in their liver enzymes. And the really important thing is that in a patient who has celiac hepatitis, that 90% of uh, those patients have improvement in their liver enzymes on the gluten-free diet. Um, one of the one of the ways you might be wondering is how would I ever know that my child or I have elevated liver enzymes? So that's something that's screened on a blood work. Uh, and you probably wouldn't have many symptoms of that. That would be likely something that might just be picked up on blood work. Um, patients with celiac hepatitis don't, tip, don't have jaundice, so that would be yellowing of the eyes. They wouldn't have a really big liver or spleen on their physical exam. So that might be something that's picked up on blood work. Maybe you're having blood work done for other reasons and, you're, and you find that you have an elevated liver enzyme, ALT or AST, that's just found by chance. And then uh, your physician might be wondering what could be a cause for that. And, and in those scenarios, um, celiac disease would be something to consider. So this isn't something you'd probably have a lot of symptoms from. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that patients with celiac disease also have higher risk of autoimmune conditions. And uh, such a, and in that, one of the conditions is autoimmune hepatitis. So that actually you probably would, you might have symptoms from tummy pain, feeling really tired, maybe you would have uh, jaundice and uh, yellowing of the eyes. And so in that, in that case, we know that about 4% of patients um, have um, who have autoimmune hepatitis have celiac disease as well. So I think it's important to think of liver changes in patients with celiac sort of in two ways. One is you might just have it picked up, uh, liver changes picked up on blood work without any symptoms, and other patients might actually have more symptoms uh, from their liver, uh, liver condition, um, and that might be related to something like autoimmune hepatitis, and that's important to think about celiac disease in those patients as there is a higher risk of that. So I think the big take home messages are that um, celiac hepatitis is uh, common. It can affect up to 27% of adults and children. It's mild elevations in liver enzymes um, and usually patients don't have too many signs in, of that and that um, they normalize on a gluten-free diet. So if a patient, if somebody's liver enzymes stay high, even after they've gone gluten-free, I think it's important to think about uh, other causes for these elevated liver enzymes. And it's also important to know that celiac disease is associated with other autoimmune liver diseases. So I think that if you do have celiac disease and your liver enzymes are still high on blood work, that it's something that should be looked into. So if you would like more information on these atypical symptoms and signs of celiac disease, please join us for our webinar next Wednesday, May the 16th. And I'd like to thank our sponsor today, 
uh, Shar for generously sponsoring this day. If uh, you have uh, further questions about anything that I've mentioned today, that it's important to speak to your family doctor um, about uh, any concerns that you may have uh, so that they can uh, further uh, look into that. And if you've enjoyed this session, please consider donating to the Canadian Celiac Association. The CCA is the voice for the celiac community in Canada and your donation helps to sponsor events like today as well uh, uh, to bring accurate information to, uh, to the celiac uh, community uh, as well as to sponsor research endeavors and you can find more information on www.celiac.ca. Thanks so much for joining us tonight and um, hope, uh, hope you found this helpful.